Hi, all of you wonderful scuba divers out there. Welcome to the Scuba Diving Magazine podcast. I'm Mark. I break down the latest scuba diving news and things that have piqued my interest over the previous week. Um, this week, looking at the, uh, the scuba diving news, a bomb was removed from a very popular dive site that nobody had noticed for about 40 years. Uh, so it's nice that that's no longer there. And also to celebrate Valentine's Day, a couple of freedivers has set a new world record. Uh, and I'll let you guess what that is until I actually get to the news story in a few minutes. So the first one, yeah, this is in Australia, a unexploded bomb that's been laying dormant at a popular Australian dive site for more than 40 years has been discovered by a recreational diver and of course it was removed uh, in what proved to be a rather tricky operation for the Royal Australian Navy clearance divers. So this was a 227 kilogram Mark 82, they, they call it a general purpose bomb. Um, now I know that, that exists a general purpose bomb, uh, but it was found close to a rock formation known as the Drum and Drumsticks uh, near the entrance to Jervis Bay on the south coast of New South Wales in Australia or off the coast of Australia. And it was situated just 30 meters away from a thriving seal community. But because of the uh, the seal community, of course, yeah, people go diving there all the time. And um, yeah, there's there's been a bomb just laying there for 40 years. I mean, I can't really talk. In the estuary near me, there's like an entire shipwreck that's just full of stuff that's just ready to explode. So, but it's it's one of those things where there's like so much explosives that they're, they're aware of it, but they don't really want to send anyone down there to either like start collecting it or like detonate it. Because if they did detonate it, chances are that like surrounding communities would get some kind of um I don't know what you'd call it we'd, we'd be in the blast radius shall we say so they're just like live and let live we'll, we'll just let it be there for a bit um but anyway so yeah this diver reported the discovery to new south wales police and provided the dive team with gps coordinates photographs and descriptions of the site so that they could find it. Uh, police cordoned off the area, smart, and monitored local marine traffic. So yeah, boats, please don't go anywhere near this. And the clearance operation carry was carried out earlier this month. The dive team faced a number of challenges during the sensitive operation, including difficult sea conditions and simply finding the bomb. Because looking at the photographs, it it blends in. It's got all of that like marine crust that's formed over it as well as a bit of seaweed and stuff. So it just blends in with the local rocks. So the explosive ordnance disposal maritime team, they, they had the GPS, which is pretty good. However, because the like ocean conditions were pretty poor and the like rocky substrate meant that they couldn't use sonar to, to pick it out. They mainly used visual search and that just took a long, long time. I think 11 divers went into the water two at a time and finally they, um, they found it. Once located, the bomb was towed to a safe location about three kilometers from shore and then detonated. Um, one of the uh, the crew, I think it was the, um, uh, the the officer in charge, said we had to go for a very long tow to remove the item out of the marine park to make sure that we weren't going to damage any of the marine life. It's one of the most popular dive spots down here, so we needed to make sure it was clear for boating, people in the water, and also marine life. They don't really go on to say, like, why it was there, who dropped it, or whatever. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a little bit safer now, and hopefully that was the uh, the, the only bomb that was um, that was dropped. The next news story, yeah, a couple of free divers. Uh, this is Beth Neal and Miles Cloutier uh, celebrated their breath hold Guinness World Record. So they're a free diving couple, and they've broken a 13 year Guinness World Record by kissing underwater for 42 seconds longer than the previous holders. Um, so their nicknames, uh, Beth's nickname is One Breath, and Miles um, is Miles Aquaman Cloutier. And he does look a bit like Jason Momoa, to be honest. Uh, if you see a photograph of him, big beard, uh, big smile on his face. So yeah, Jason, Jason Momoa, Aquaman. And 
They sealed their lips together for four minutes and six seconds in a pool at the LUX South Area Toll Resort in the Maldives on the 4th of February. Uh, of course, to um, because Guinness World Records, they have to like prove things so you don't always get it exactly then and there. They did it ahead of time. And the news was released by uh, Guinness World Records to coincide with Valentine's Day, of course, the, the 14th. The couple's three-year projects to break the old record, uh, which had been set by an Italian team TV show in 2010 proved a bit more challenging than they had originally anticipated. So they met five years ago in Bermuda, uh, where Neil from South Africa runs five day free diving and conservation camps for children. Uh, Cloutier from Canada turned up as a non diving volunteer, but now they're engaged. They live together in South Africa with their 18 month old daughter, working as underwater wildlife filmmakers. And Neil, a four times South African free diving champion, has set a number of national and African continental records and actually taught Cloutier to free dive. She is now a pure apnea master freediving instructor and also a paddy advanced open water instructor. Uh, she's been scuba diving for about 10 years now uh, when she did her very first freediving course in a UK quarry, uh, probably one that I used to teach at, um, whilst living in London. So the couple took several weeks out for serious training for this underwater kissing world record attempt in South Africa, but once in the Maldives found that pre-bid nerves kicked into the extent and they couldn't even match the existing record time. And they, they quoted, uh, three days before the record, I just couldn't hold my breath, Neil told uh, Guinness World Records. It was very interesting for me because I'm a free diving instructor and all the things that I tell my students I wasn't able to follow myself for the first time in my life. What made the difference from her usual ocean free diving was having to remain still and be aware of the passing time. On the day after their warm-up routine, the couple completed two trial underwater kisses of two and three minutes before going for the record. They'd asked the watching crowd to stay silent until the four minute mark had passed, but in the event, neither of them could hear the cheering. In Neil's case, probably because she was curing her nerves by listening to Eminem's Lose Yourself uh, on underwater earphones. Uh, the record was verified on the spot by a GWR girl. Guinness World Record adjudicator. Uh, so a nice, nice news story coming from um, from Valentine's Day. And um, yeah, Struth, just four minutes, just breath holding in a pool. I mean, now I used to do it as, uh, as practice when I was teaching. And yeah, you, you just you do get bored and then of course you do focus on all oh, the times ticking away and then that little voice in the back of your head goes hmm, shouldn't you need to breathe by now uh so yeah i can fully understand why she'd want like music to uh, to distract her and um yeah distract her from that little voice in the back of her head Next news story is uh, is a sad news story, and it's news that the um, one of the boys that was caught in the Thai cave rescue, the uh, the captain of the football team, has died. Um, it was a for, all I can really find is that it was a head injury. Um, he's he's over here, or he was sorry over here in the UK, and um, he was on a uh, a scholarship, and he he was. Like the, the captain of the Wild Boars soccer team uh, back when he was um, 13, when they were trapped inside the Tam, oh, I forget how to pronounce it, Tam Tam Lang Cave, and actually gained a scholarship through the Thai non profit Zico Foundation to the Brookhouse College Football Academy in Leicester uh, late last year when he was 17. Um, and um, yeah, the. Information is quite um, scarce. I couldn't find too much information on like what this injury was. Uh, as far as I can find, it's just he's fallen and hit his head. So I don't know whether this was a training accident, uh, fell down the stairs and bumped his head or something. Um, but yeah, he died. So imagine going through all of that and at one stage was like the most famous or at least one of the most famous people on the um, on the planet. I remember the um, the weeks when they were when when all this news was like forever updates each day on exactly what was um, what was going on and what their situation was. 
and yeah every single day following that news story and um survived that made it out um made it's truth i've forgotten how many documentaries and films there are on it um but yeah, I watched one not that long ago when it was released. It was the Colin Farrell and um, Viggo Mortensen. Um, I think it's just called Thirteen Lives, which is pretty good. And um, and yeah, now after after made it out of that death defying situation, um, now he's he's sadly uh, sadly passed away. Thoughts are on the uh, the family, obviously, in this tragic time. Um, but yeah. Um, it, yeah, um, one news piece said that he had fallen and hit his head. That's um, that's the only information that I have. As far as new dive equipment, uh, so the first one is that a new dive torch, an umbilical dive torch, is starting to pop up online from Apex. Now, it's not from Apex specifically. It's not on Apex's website, or at least it, it wasn't when I um, when I checked yesterday. Uh, but it is in like third party websites, uh, like selling it. And this is the Apex Luna X and very shiny. It's got a gunmetal gray battery and head to it. It has the Apex orange like flare to it and their um their metal goodman style handle which is a very cool goodman handle and you can tell it's very new because when you actually look at the the heads the bit that produces the light it's so small but it still produces uh 3300 lumens of light so very very powerful and it just goes to show the modern technology nowadays that goes into these heads they i always expect them to be like relative bricks themselves but now the head itself is so dinky it's it it almost looks out of place on the like relatively large goodman style handle um but yeah uh so the 3300 lumen apex luna x primary dive torch has spot to wide and full beam modes three power settings to light up any dive lightweight robust umbilical dive torch from apex is perfect for communicating underwater for uh or for illuminating wide areas whilst uh, reducing backscatter in murky waters so on the front looks like you've got three leds two pairs of leds and by the sounds of it, you have both a spotlight and a floodlight, depending on what you need during the dive. On the back, two buttons by the looks of it, so you can adjust the, the power settings and the, uh, and the beam angle, presumably. And that attaches onto the, the Goodman handle. So if you don't know, Goodman handle is kind of like, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it on a podcast. Um, it's, it's a horizontal handle so that you don't have to hold onto the torch itself. It kind of clamps around the, the palm of your hand. So you can still open up your hand to, to do things if you need to. Um, but it is just a more secure grip. And the Apex one is really nice because most Goodman handles, you can move them like up or down. Um, so on like how tight it is on your hand because if you're wearing gloves of course you need it a bit larger if you're just barehanded then it's a bit smaller different hand sizes and all that so you can adjust it you can do this on the apex but what's also clever is and they have this on their new uh, ascend reels in that the the actual rubberized handle you can rotate normally on a goodman handle you just have like a bar of metal and that's it you just have to hold on to that whereas it's much more ergonomic and the rubberized thing means that you get a bit more of a grip you have a dedicated stainless steel attachment point for a um, uh, for a bolt snap and you can like rotate it and flip it over depending on where you want that bolt snap to be so it is very um very customizable and, uh, and very modern. The, um, the umbilical light means that the battery itself is in a separate battery canister that can either fit to your hip or you can clamp it to your cylinder. And that just allows, you can have this big heaving battery. Uh, let's try and see how big the, uh, the battery is. Technical information, 27.2 uh, amp hour. So big battery. Um, and that means that you can have sensible burn times with all of that power at the same time. So it's always that trade-off. If you have a really powerful torch, but it's in like a, a normal hands, 
handheld battery size or so handheld torch size then the battery itself is relatively small so you have a relatively small burn time whereas with an umbilical torch you can have a small torch that you actually hold in your hand a, a cable granted you have this uh, electrical cable that runs from that to the battery but then you have a big battery so you get the best of both worlds and if you dive like a, a long hose primary donate then that sits on your uh, on your right hand hip and you just tuck the hose underneath the uh, the battery canister and that holds it in place um the, uh, the 2023 release Apex Lunar X primary dive torch is perfect for communicating underwater. Uh, various modes, uh, LED, that's just repeating what it's already said. The light beam can be adjusted from spot wide or full with three power levels, high, medium or low, pumping out light from 750 to 330 lumens. So that's quite a nice range. I usually say around 750 is like the sweet spot for if you're diving like the Red Sea at night, nice clear blue water. You don't need, because anything else, as soon as you shine it at someone, something, or even the sand, you're just gonna blind it. So 700 lumens is like my sweet spot when um, uh, when night diving in clear blue waters, up to 3,300 lumens. So yeah, that's when you just need a lot of light, either to be able to see, to be seen from a great distance, uh, as either underwater or the surface, plenty of, uh, of power. Corrosion resistant, able to withstand harsh dive environments. It's Apex, that's what they do. Uh, Apex Lunar X primary dive torch is both lightweight, low profile and strong. Um, burn times at full on high mode, three and a half hours. That's pretty good. And then maximum is 14 hours at, um, at the lowest power mode. Uh, where let's find out because they keep saying it's lightweight overall weight without handle is 875 grams which is pretty good it's less than a kilo uh, it's a lithium-ion battery uh, the battery itself is 535 grams uh, a charge time of nine hours so yeah pretty good specs uh, nice simple clean design uh, yeah there's two control buttons on the back left hand button changes the output power whilst the right hand button will change the modes uh yeah i quite like this oh there's a, a fuel gauge function so when the lunar x is switched on and after the mode or output is changed the led display shows the remaining burn time in hours and minutes for 10 seconds and it's two different colors as well. So it's green and red. This is quite nice. And you see this on the, um, the back of most Apex torches and um, Exposure Marine torches. They have a little LED panel that tells you in yeah hours and minutes exactly how much burn time you have left at your present power settings. And um, yeah, I love my Exposure Marine torches and the, the Apex ones are basically the, the descendants of them yeah so useful some dive torches they they do nothing they basically just run out and switch off others they sometimes they like blink when they get to like 50 percent or whatever uh some have like traffic light color-coded systems either around the button or on the uh, the back of the torch uh, but yeah with when it's actually spelled out on an led screen it is so much more convenient so um yeah, um, 1,440 pounds, it's pretty expensive. Uh, this is a real investment. This is, yeah, technical dive torch, a bit like their, uh, their DSX. It's, it's expensive, but it, it's really made for that proper explorer style, um, like scuba diver, technical diver. And that's actually the next bit of news is that the um, my sample Apex DSX dive computer finally arrived. Uh, I know I've mentioned it like, every single week since the beginning of the year or something. But yeah, it, it finally arrived. That arrived day before yesterday. And um, yeah, I've done part of the video. I've got some B-roll to uh, to shoot a little bit later today. Um, so far, clever piece of kit and well, well structured, well put together. Uh, the video will go live uh, probably next week, I think around the, uh, the 21st, but um, yeah, smart, smart dive computer and uh, and really nice and tough. But I think that was about it as far as um, dive gear. 
Um, I did see something this morning about Halcyon. They um, they got a new offer where you can use like uh, two different colours of stitching or something for the same price um, to uh, to personalise your wings. But I think that's about it as far as dive equipment. Looking at our YouTube channel, uh, Ask Mark Questions, which masks have the best view? So this was someone they were looking at a, a couple Tusa dive masks, either the Zen C or the Paragon S, and they, they were just kind of asking about like which has the, the better field of view. And typically I find it um, like frameless masks do tend to help with that because without the, the bulky frame, the, the glass lenses can be a little bit closer to your face, which does widen out your, your field of view. It's one of those things where you kind of have to go to your dive center to test them out because different manufacturers photograph masks slightly differently if you use a different lens then yeah they can like appear a little bit wider um if you're using like a, a 35 millimeter against a 50 or something then it, it changes like the overall like almost dimensions of the mask so it can be quite hard to directly compare one mask against another one purely based on the, the the image and the question really really like um sort of took me back to my very first steps inside of a dive center and yeah i, I signed up for a course and i bought a um, a mask and yeah literally tried on every mask on the wall just to see which mask was was best for me basically and um and that actually sparked on a uh, another video that I was working on, I think late last week, early this week, which was top 10 um, tips for when you're buying a dive mask. And just, just little things like, you know the old like sniff test where you, you brush all the hair out from your face, you, you try the mask on without the strap and then you just sniff through your nose. That's okay, but as soon as you consider that oh, hey, you know what happens when you put a regulator or a snorkel in your mouth? Your top lip changes shape. So actually the sniff test should be done with some kind of mouthpiece in your mouth to ensure that you do have that proper, uh, proper fit. So that will be coming out in um, probably about a week or two. And this week I've been working on um, a similar one, top 10 tips for when you're buying a dive computer, because I do get asked a lot of questions about dive computers and um, sort of, should I go for this one? Should I go for that one? Um, and one of the, the main things is that when you set a budget, just because a dive computer sits right at the top of that budget doesn't necessarily mean that it's better for you. So by all means, set that budget, but also look lower down because dive computers nowadays, especially like recreational dive computers, even the cheapest ones are pretty darn good and they have everything that most divers need. So don't be afraid to, to go for the more inexpensive dive computers. Um, still, still look at those like upper tier ones because you do get extra features and extra things. Um, but do be aware that yeah, some of the uh, the features that you might want or need or are essential may also be in a, a cheaper dive computer. Another question, um, where was it? Was uh, can I put my necklace on my primary? So this was a, a diver who had been diving a regulator setup where their primary, the one that's the the regulator second stage that's actually in their mouth, had a necklace on it which basically means you, you just have a, a bungee loop that goes around behind your, uh, your neck. And if, for whatever reason, that regulator gets knocked out of your mouth, it just sits down on your chest and you just grab it, put it back in. They were then planning to move on to a long hose primary donate setup, and they were asking whether they could keep their primary in a, a necklace, again, just in case something should, uh, should knock it out. And... It's a matter of no, because on a long hose primary donate setup, you don't, if your buddy comes up to you and they're saying that they're out of air, you don't donate your octo 
the one that's like sitting on your hip or something, mainly because it isn't sitting on your hip. Uh, you have your alternate air source. We tend to call it alternate air source instead of octopus or octo. Um, and that one, the alternate, is sitting around your neck, whereas you're breathing from your primary, which is on a really long hose. And as the, the name of the setup suggests, you donate your primary, mainly because you know that that one is functioning and it's safe to breathe at that exact depth. So you can just take it straight out of your mouth, hand that to your buddy, so at least they can get a breath in. You, being the donator, then take your alternate air source from around your neck and then pop that in your mouth. But if your primary is on a necklace, you then have to like unthread it over your head and uh, and donate it to them so it, it just it's extra things to get in the way to um to yeah cause havoc so no your alternate in a long hose primary donate setup should really be on a necklace whereas your primary should be free um the most that a lot of divers have is like a, a little bolt snap to uh, to secure it somewhere um but in a an octo or an octopus kind of setup where you donate your alternate, then yeah, you can have your primary in a, um, a necklace if you are so rich. Um, yeah, otherwise video that went live, I think was uh, how auto shoulder dumps work. That was quite a fun video to, um, to break down because I didn't really know. Someone asked me the question, I forget which channel on, um, and they, they, yeah, they basically asked, oh, hey, how, how does a, um, a shoulder dump work? And other than, Oh, well, when you rotate it like clockwise, it increases the resistance. And when you unscrew it, it, uh, it, it reduces the resistance. And then in an emergency, you can bash it from the outside. I didn't really know the mechanics. So I decided to uh, pull one of mine apart. And I don't think it, it goes back together anymore because I manhandled it a bit. Um, I haven't tried that hard to, uh, to put it back together yet, to be honest, because I've, I've got a few spares knocking around. Um, but yeah, it was quite interesting to look at and see the different valves and work out the, the airflow and how the different mechanisms functioned. So uh, yeah, that, that was a really good, interesting video to uh, to record. Um, and yeah, right now I'm really focusing on the uh, the DSX, trying to get that video all um, like comprehensive so that I'm touching everything. This, this computer, man, it has so many features on the inside that I just wasn't aware of. I had to go through the entire user manual just to make sure that I was covering all of the bases. And um, yeah, it's, it's very, very comprehensive. Um, I've spoken about the, uh, the GPS function on, uh, on one part, but I haven't actually gotten to it in the, uh, in the menu structure. So, um, yeah, that's that's my afternoon all sorted. Trying to um, yeah get some B-roll footage of that, but um, yeah, I think that's about it. We uh, we really are getting close to the uh, the go diving show. So if you're going to be around, then um, then yeah, you might be able to uh, sort of meet me up there. I'm going to be doing some um, some video work at the go diving show in uh, here in the UK. So um, yeah, check it out. I think it's I think it literally is go diving show dot. Com, uh, but of course you can find details at scubadivingmag.com otherwise that's it for another week uh, thank you for listening everybody and of course safe diving